Hey there, Aries. Welcome to your reading for uh, 2023. We are going to look in your first row here at your first house, which represents kind of like you, <laughs> yourself, new beginnings. Uh, and we're really going to be focusing on your approach to the year uh, in this first row. Uh, so you have this trine sextile card and it says symbiosis on it, which is kind of like, um, be, you know, working together, like two things working together uh, in your life. And, you know, I do feel there are two things that could be working together, but it's not like immediately clear to me, Aries, what you could be working together with. For some of you, actually, I do know what it is. It's a person. <laughs> so you could be working together with a person who kind of like fills in some gaps in your life, especially we're talking about like in work or business, there could be a person who maybe they're just like good at doing something that you're not good at. And again, look at this reading. Uh, this looks very good, Aries. But I feel like you could be working together with like a person who kind of like fills in some gaps with this uh, trying sextile card. I also feel like you could be better at working together with yourself because sometimes I think we, you know, trying energy in astrology, this is the trying sextile card. In trying energy, like we're born with trines. There are things that we, in trines kind of represent things that we're born with, skills that we're born with. And usually people who have a lot of trines are seen as lazy, even though they're not lazy. They just like, if you're born with something, then you just don't think it's special because you're born with it. And, you know, part of working with trine energy is to realize that maybe you have talents, gifts, skills, and abilities that you were born with and that you need to use them. And so how do we know what these things are? Well, really, we have to pay attention because usually people will say something to you like throughout your life. Like, I think you need to think about your life and like, what are things that people have told you you're good at? And But you're like, what? No, I'm not. <laughs> like, what are those things? And, um, you know, if you have those things, I would pay attention because you probably need to use those skills. You have the Ace of Wands, the uh, Queen of Wands, and the Two of Swords. Uh, definitely, again, first house is all about new beginnings. And I feel there is clearly uh, a new beginning coming in for you with the Ace of Wands. I mean, Ace of Wands is out with the old, in with the new. You can see there's a castle that's crumbling right over here. And again, it kind of represents out with the old, in with the new. So I feel there is a new beginning, a very passionate new beginning coming in for you. I also feel like it's something that is going to lead to a victory. I mean, look at this reading here, Aries. You go down from the to the Three of Wands, which I feel is like some sort of growth or progress, to the Ace of Swords, which is a victory. Going this way, uh, Chariot victory, all the way over to the Ten of Pentacles, which is also like major success. So there's a lot of success in starting new things in your life. I think that your challenge is actually this Queen of Wands. You can see that she has this black cat right here. And, um, you know, black cat cats in the time of tarot were considered very unlucky. Yes, I, for all you cat ladies out there, I totally understand that black cats are still not unlucky. I'm talking about the times of tarot, not right now, right? So if you have a black cat, good for you. But what I'm saying here is that during the times of tarot, they were considered very unlucky. But the whole point, cat ladies, if you listen, the whole point about the Queen of Wands is she doesn't care. She loves her cat. That's all that matters. So the point of the Queen of Wands is that there may be things that you want to do that other people don't agree with. And that's what the black cat represents is that you are to do those things anyway. <laughs> so don't listen to anyone else is really what this card says. Also, there is a kind of like an element of risk with the queen of wands because she's the only wands court card that does not have salamanders on her cloak. Salamanders in the tarot represent uh, protection from fire. So like protection from risk. But the whole point of the Queen of Wands is that she takes the risk anyway because she's bold, she's courageous, she moves forward like towards the things that she wants in her life boldly, aggressively. And uh, I really get that energy here where it's like if you just charge towards things um, that you have been working on for a very long time, then you're gonna be successful. But if you sit where you have been all this time, <laughs> then you won't. The Two of Swords really is a card, you know, a lot of people say it's like a card of like finding a middle ground, coming to an agreement, uh, things like that. I can say that she's not doing those things, but she really needs to go over here to this new island that's behind her because she is sitting where she has always been. So, you know, to me, this is really a card of leaving a comfort zone. I would be careful also of going back to comfort zones. You have the Knight of Swords right here. Sometimes with the Knight of Swords, I feel that it can represent us getting very close to a victory right here, 
um, you know, Ace of Swords, but then we run back to the past, right? So it basically says, don't do that in any area of your life. Keep charging forward towards your future because I feel like there's a lot of success, clearly. I mean, it's a really good year for you, Jupiter, Jupiter in your first house. Uh, with the Ace of Wands, you have this Harmony card. There's more peace and harmony coming in for you here. Um, you know, I kind of feel like it, what's interesting as well is I feel like you could be looking at a past situation, love, business, or otherwise, and you could be like, wow, that really interrupted my peace. <laughs> and so I feel like you are really kind of like moving towards peace with this peace and harmony card or this harmony card, I should say. Definitely like moving towards balance as well. Uh, with the Queen of Wands, you have this eccentricity card. I mean, literally, that is everything I was saying because, you know, again, during the times of tarot, she has that black cat. That would be eccentric. You know what I mean? She doesn't care what anyone thinks. She kind of does her own thing. And that's definitely a big lesson here for, for you, Aries. And it's showing up in your first house, which is like you, how you present yourself to the world. So, you know, kind of like marching to the beat of your own drummer is exactly what you should be doing, uh, you know, especially not just like now, but this year, <laughs> the whole year. With the Two of Swords, you have this Patience card. Yeah, like no waiting. Like, uh, see, to me, I feel like this is waiting energy, not in a good way. You know, especially if you're like dealing with a person and they're making you wait. Uh, I kind of feel like you need to switch roles, go from here to here to this lady. She kind of looks like the Empress. So I would say like no waiting on people, no giving people that type of, you know, power. I don't know. It's such a weird message to get that. Um, but for some of you, it's like, I almost wonder if you're like dealing or have dealt with a person in the past who like always made you wait. And I kind of feel this is not saying like, no, you're about to have a glow up or something's going on here. So it's like, if you're waiting, then you're like lowering your vibration in a sense, because it's like, you're kind of saying that they're better than you. I hope that makes sense. I don't know. It doesn't even make sense to me. <laughs> so there you go, Aries. Hopefully you can make sense of that. Uh, next in your second house for earned income, uh, value things that you value, uh, you know, can be anything about your income as well. You have this, uh, there's a million other things that I can mean, but you have this underworld card. It says, find unconventional ways to explore new sources of income. I definitely feel that that would be a good idea for you here, Aries. I always get these circles for you, Aries, and I'm, you're the only sign that I get this message for, but it's almost as if there's like more you could be doing with what you got. Like, let's say you have a career. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, I've talked about this a lot to other people as well, but really it's like a message that I only get for you. It's like, maybe you have a career, but maybe you could also, you know, do something related to your career that could make you money on the side, like start a YouTube channel talking about whatever your career is, right? You could end up being seen as an expert or something along those lines. And, um, you know, I feel like working on that could be very beneficial to you. I would also like, if you have a business, I would be like saying like, how can I get more out of what I got, right? And it's like, it's not like you're stretching the dollar. That's not, that's not the type of message I'm getting. I'm just getting that there's like more, re you, there's like more resources that you could be getting out of what you got. I mean, the best example I could give you is it's like, you know, my channel here, it's like, I take some of my content and I, I clip it for like Instagram and like other things. So it's like, I'm kind of getting more out of what I'm doing. It's a bad example, but <laughs> you know, again, I feel like there are like things that you could be doing to make that happen. I also feel like you're coming out of the underworld. Like if you follow the hero's journey, the hero always goes into the underworld and like discovers some sort of like secret or some sort of special weapon, right? In the underworld and then comes out and is able to, you know, be successful in, in the rest of their journey. I kind of see that here. If you've been struggling financially or if there's been like some, uh, like a lack of growth or if you just feel frustrated, I just feel frustrated, honestly, as far as my finances are concerned, if I put myself in your shoes, then what I would say is that there's a, it's like you're leaving the underworld Maybe it's been frustrating, but it's like, this is part of the hero, your hero's journey. And I think it's leading to success. Uh, you have the chariot, 10 of pentacles, uh, three of wands and the knight of swords. So I feel like you need to keep going. Definitely don't go, don't turn around, right? Don't leave is what I would say here. You know, I'm also kind of getting like, you know, I think you need to have something to aim at. It reminds me of like Abraham Hicks, Esther Hicks, whatever you want to call her. Um, you know, she talks about how, like when you're manifesting something, you don't like, if you imagine you uh, want to go to California and you live in New York. We don't go from like New York to Pennsylvania and then go all the way back to New York to make sure we're going in the right direction. But that's how most people manifest. They like start moving in the right direction, but then they go back to the beginning because they don't see evidence of their manifestation. So we just need to have something to aim at. We just need to go straight towards it. And I kind of feel that here. It's like saying, don't turn around to make sure that you're moving forward. Just trust that you are, you're still moving forward. You are clearly um, moving towards success. And by the way, you have the seven of swords here. Seven of swords, 
but then you go to the Ten of Pentacles, by the way. Uh, Seven of Swords can represent lying, cheating, stealing, but really it's a card of tactics. Number one, it's a golden card. Golden cards in the tarot are meant to be positive no matter what. And it's a golden card, so you know I don't care what anyone says, but it's a card of tactics. He's stealing those swords from an army in the background. It can just say that you know if you're moving forward towards something and you're not seeing progress, that you just need to try something else. You just need to um, you know take a different approach to whatever it is that you're doing. But I see a lot of growth. I really feel that your ships are coming in here with the Three of Wands. Personally, normally with the Three of Wands, I feel like we need to do more. <laughs> but for you, I feel kind of like your ships are coming in. I actually feel that you've been, you've like put a lot of energy out and now you're going to be experiencing like a harvest, especially in work or business here, Aries. And you have the chariot, which is like a victory. So I do feel like you're moving towards some sort of victory. I do feel that you're really setting yourself apart as well. You have this card, but in the next row, you have this poised card, which is like this lady and she's on a pedestal. You can see here, I'll show you in a minute. But, you know, to me, the chariot, he's leaving that city behind because maybe he's going somewhere that's less crowded. Maybe he's going somewhere where there's less competition or maybe he's kind of like setting himself apart. Maybe there's still just as much competition, but maybe he's setting himself apart so much that the competition can't keep up, right? And I really kind of feel that here, Aries, where it's like you're setting yourself apart. It makes sense that you have these cards of expansion, three of wands, that poise card, the chariot. I mean, again, you're gonna have Jupiter entering into your first house, so it makes perfect sense to me. Oh, here you go. With the chariot, you have this domination card. I feel like you're gonna be dominating. <laughs> it's like you're like you're number one here, Aries, especially for those of you that have like a career, a business, whatever, uh, you know, fi financially, I feel like you're gonna be dominating uh, with this energy for sure. With the three of wands, you have this friendship card. I kind of, I think I said something at the beginning of the reading about like working together with other people or there's like a person that can fill in the gaps. So don't be afraid to, um, you know, work together with other people. It does seem to be a year of teamwork. And again, I, I don't think this is gonna stop anytime soon, basically for the rest of our lives. There's a lot of astrology where I believe we're moving towards co-creation. We're not, we're moving away from competition. That doesn't mean there won't be competition. It just means that, you know, that co-creative element is gonna be more supported. I mean, Pluto entering into Aquarius next year, it's gonna retrograde out, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> you know, Pluto in Aquarius, it, it's like we're starting, uh, a new generation, Pluto is generational, and it's like a generation of co-creation. Aquarius is kind of like the humanitarian, right? So, you know, to me, if we're not working on co-creation, then we're not gonna be as successful as we could be. With the uh, Knight of Swords, you have this devotion card. See, I feel like for some of you, you literally could have like a friend or a family member who wants to help you, who is devoted to you and devoted to your success. The other thing that I'm getting here is I would be careful of you being devoted to something that drags you down. Knight of Swords running back to the past, like I've been saying, it's like, you know, sometimes I think we have those people in our life who are just drowning, those people who can't save themselves. And I'm not saying we shouldn't help people, but if you're sacrificing yourself for someone else, if you're sacrificing your success for someone else, that's never a good idea. It's never a good thing. I don't care what anyone says. I, I constantly have people that say like, how dare you say that you, you don't help other people? I'm like, well, clean out your ears because that's not what I said, number one. Number two, it's like there is no honor in drowning when someone, in saving someone who is also drowning, someone who can't save themselves. And I'm not talking about literally drowning here for you uh, YouTube police out there either. But, you know, again, there's no honor in that. So I'd be careful of, you know, dealing with those people this year that, um, you know, I think I said this to you in your last reading. Don't don't spend too much time with the losers in life, right? And, um, you know, that's what I kind of feel like that's saying because you're on the way up, clearly. Even in your third house, you have this poised card right here. So I feel there's a lot of success coming in for you with this poised energy. It's like you're being lifted up and put on a pedestal. And so you're setting yourself apart. I, I get like, you know, again, don't get me wrong. I get like the kind of like the pedestal success thing. But to me, it's more... To me, the energy that I'm picking up here is different. It's like setting yourself apart. You're really, which could be lifting you up. It's almost like that's more of a side effect though. It's like the, you're making yourself more unique. Let's put it that way. I feel like you're putting yourself in a position where it's like most people can't keep up. The third house is about your thinking, your mental activity, your communication. You know, it's kind of like the things that are on your mind. It can also represent learning and traveling as well. And I'm saying that because I do feel travel for some of you for some reason. It, you have like no travel cards except for the three wands and the chariot, but I'm talking about in your third house. And, uh, but I get travel <laughs> in this position for some reason. So I don't know, you could be traveling. 
And if you are, I think it could be the thing that kind of like lifts you up. But I also think that your thoughts should be on like, how can I make your, how can I make myself more unique? How can I make myself, you know, stand out? And those are the things I'd be thinking about here. You have the High Priestess, the Seven of Swords, and the Ace of Swords. Some of you, I would be careful of like, you know, if you've dealt with a person who did lie, cheat, or steal, like I understand that it, that, that can be very hurtful, right? But I would also, like I wouldn't spend too much time thinking about it. I kind of just have this energy here of, you know, kind of like replaying something in your head. So I, I definitely feel when someone does you dirty like that, you know, it's kind of like a hard thing to move past. And I do, and just intuitively, I feel some of you have dealt with a person or have been dealing with a person who did you dirty. And it's like, you're trying to heal from it, but you know, it's because of what they did. Maybe there's no closure as well. And I feel that's kind of like adding on top of it. So I feel like you need to protect your thoughts is what this is saying. And like, just slowly try to move your thoughts to something else, right? And, you know, people always ask me, this is like my thing with tarot, all these, all the love readings. And again, I'm not hating on these love reading um, people that do love readings. I think there's a time and a place. And I think they are helpful for people as well. But at the same time, it's like, if you're watching like 60 love readings a day, it's like, what I would do is I would start lowering the amount, right? <laughs> I would maybe go to 59 one day, then go to 58. And like, and you might think I'm joking, but I'm not. I would like slowly kind of like wean yourself off, like needing answers, right? Because it's like, I think you could drive yourself crazy by doing that. So I would definitely be careful of that. For others, I feel like you need more play in your life. He has these orange polka dots on his cloak here. Polka dots in the tarot represent, you know, while on the Seven of Swords, it's kind of like about taking things too seriously in, in you know, any area of your life. And it kind of just says, you need to get out of your head. And I'm wondering, again, a lot of people have had this message this year. It could just be a very mental year for all of us, for everyone. There could be a lot of that kind of like cerebral thinking energy, <laughs> Ace of Swords, very good card, don't get me wrong, definitely leading to a victory, but it's like if all you're doing is working, I think that could lead to some big issues that could lead to you burning out or getting tired, so make sure that doesn't happen. Again, having the Ace of Swords in your third house is pretty good. This to me says that you're thinking, your thoughts are on victory, I think your thoughts are on success and kind of like getting this crown and setting yourself apart. So definitely a lot of victories coming in for you. I do think that there could be communication about a truth coming in for you here, Aries. Uh, do you want that truth? Mm, I don't know. I, I would be careful. Like, again, if you're dealing with a past person, if you don't want the truth, <laughs> then I would be careful. It's like, do you really want to know that someone cheated on you with like your mom, your cousin, and the chick down the street? Probably not. You probably don't want to really know that. Even though maybe, you know, I kind of have this sense of wanting closure, but do you really want that that type of closure? Probably not. So maybe there needs to be like some blocking that happens or some boundaries put up. You also have the high priestess. It's kind of interesting. I feel like you need to trust your thoughts here. I'm also getting something about your dreams as well, like trusting your dreams, or you could be getting some crazy messages in your dreams. And that's what I'd be looking at here. Also, as far as your thinking is concerned, I feel there could be like a lot of gold in your, in mysteries. Um, you know, if we go this way, you have the 10 of pentacles, 10 of pentacles, there's kind of like a little known meaning of the Ten of Pentacles where it can represent hidden or secret information. So I feel like there could be some information like if like in a mystery. So what the hell am I talking about? Well, what I'm talking about is like if you become interested in some like random topic or if you watch something on TV like totally randomly and that you've never watched before, it could be like a documentary or some information about your business or whatever. You know, I would look into those things and because there could just be some gold in those mysteries, right? With the high priestess, here you go. You have this flattery card, but you know what's interesting about this card? It's like there's two heads, two heads facing in a different directions, two heads facing together. I feel like you need to focus on alignment. I'm not actually getting anything with flattery at all, <laughs> other than the fact that I feel like flattery is not gonna get people very far with you this year. It's like, especially in love. Again, um, I'm doing these in parts. We're gonna do four houses, per part, I'm gonna do three parts for 2023, maybe more actually, but um, you know, just for now, three parts for 2023, each house in astrology we're gonna cover. And we're gonna look into your romantic houses in part two for the most part. But what I would say is I feel that, you know, again, flattery isn't gonna get people very far with you. I think you're looking for something deeper as far as a connection is concerned. 
probably where you have similar ideas. I don't think you're looking for someone who's exactly the same as you. I actually feel like you could be attracting someone who's very different. But I think maybe your morals, your ethics, like those deeper things are going to be very similar between the two of you. And again, you could be experiencing a lot of communication and love because you have Jupiter in your first house. I mean, Jupiter in your first is really, really good for love or attracting love. And um, the other thing I would say is if you were born in like the late 80s and you have Jupiter in Aries, then, you know, definitely could be attracting a person this year. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Uh, with the um, Seven of Swords, you have the birth card here. Uh, some of you could be having a baby, I suppose. But, you know, uh, I would a lot of people have had the birth cards. You could be just birthing a lot of new ideas. I would also like be, but I feel it's like more than that. I feel like you need to take care of your ideas. I feel you need to nurture them and treat them like babies and really kind of, you know, kind of work with your ideas. There's also like, you know, here's the other thing as well is like, I think that you are setting a lot of things up for like the next decade, not even right now. So, you know, I think this is just like the very beginning of Aries, you know, stepping into the limelight, something like that. With the Ace of Swords, you have this egotism card. Uh, some of you definitely could be dealing with a person who had an ego from the past. And again, this could be the person that's trying to communicate with you. I would be careful of dealing with that person. I would also like maintain your your humility. I, I, I don't think that you wouldn't, but you have that poise card. You're getting a lot of attention. And you know, I would just like, don't run into any issues here is what I'm trying to say. Uh, next in the area of your foundation, you have the standstill card. Um, this, the, this this is the area of your fourth house, I should say, which is your foundation, but it can also represent your home and your family. I do feel like some of you have been feeling a little stuck. Maybe that's why I was feeling travel in the third house, because maybe you've been thinking about moving or getting unstuck or setting yourself free, like from a home type situation. But it's like, it's been at a standstill, I feel, in the past. I almost feel like this is past energy. I'm actually going to pull the next card because I want to see what it is. <laughs> what, do, what do you know? What do you know? <laughs> you have this voyage card. You are ready to spread your wings. I feel like you're ready to go on a journey. I feel like you're ready to move, look for a new location, something like that. You have the Ten of Pentacles, the Nine of Pentacles, and the Queen of Swords. So I feel there's like a lot of success with the Ten of Pentacles coming in for you clearly. I love the Ten of Pentacles and... You know, honestly, I love it even more in the fourth house because it is a card of like happy home, happy family times 10. Like to me, it's the ultimate version of the 10 of cups. Like it's way better. It's like the, the happy family is on the card, but they also have security. They also have money. It's like more than the 10 of cups. So it's like the 10 of cups amplified, right? And I feel a lot of you could be experiencing that, especially if you're like building a family, if you're working on a family. Uh, I think everyone is pretty much focused on the Ten of Pentacles because we have Uranus and Taurus. Uranus and Taurus really wants us to be free, you know, wants us to create freedom, but also wants us to focus on the long-term aspects of like finances, material goods, material things. So I believe personally that the Ten of Pentacles has been coming up a lot because it wants us to create security, um, long-term security, and this could be in finances as well. So I feel a lot of you are very focused on kind of building and leaving a legacy, and this could be involving the home. You also have the Nine of Pentacles here. So you're definitely working on your financial security, I feel, your financial foundation. Again, the Four of Pentacles isn't necessarily a financial house, but it has to do with all foundations that exist in your life. So, <laughs> you know, you, you could just be working on your financial foundation. Uh, there's also a snail right here. I'll show you over here. There's a snail right above my finger, and the snails wear their homes on their back. So a lot of you, I feel, you know, the Nine of Pentacles to me is a card of your environment, the things just around you. I feel for a lot of you that you could be making changes to your environment, environment, the things that are around you. I always like use the example, I used to live in an apartment, I couldn't sleep. I moved my bed and I started sleeping. <laughs> so it's like, you never know how change, making a change in your environment, like moving a bed or moving a couch or something, or just cleaning things up as well. You, you never know how that could improve something in your life. So there you go. You have the Queen of Swords as well. I feel like you are very mu much more focused on the future. I kind of feel this is like a membrane that you have to pass through. I'm going to show you. The Net of Swords. It's almost as if this is a point where you would normally stop right here. Net of Swords and you would go back. I feel if, you know, without knowing your life, I don't know what this is necessarily talking about. For some of you, it's a person. Maybe you keep 
you know, getting to a person <laughs> in love. It's the same person and you need to push past that person. For others, it could be like a certain amount of money. Maybe you have been making $50,000 a year for like the past 10 years, but maybe you want 100, maybe you want 150. And so there's like something you have to push past here, I feel. And I do feel this is the year that you could be having like some sort of breakthrough. Uh, let's see. With the Ten of Pentacles, you have this extremism card. Uh, like, I would be careful with the glow up here, uh, Aries. Like, some of you, it's like you, I definitely get glow up vibes here. You could be finding success. I would be careful of, like, family members who, like, try to get in your business or people who try to create resistance in your life. I would just avoid conflict at all costs, uh, plain and simple. With the Nine of Pentacles, you have the speculation card. I would definitely be careful of speculation this year. I keep telling people if like you're an investor, if you invest money, I would definitely be doing a lot more research. Like, you know, I, there's a saying in the investing community, do your do your research, right? Do your own research. But I would be doing extra research. Like I wouldn't just be blindly investing in things. I keep telling people like, you know, you want to talk about crypto scams and stuff like that. We, ha we, ain't, we ain't seen nothing yet as far as I'm concerned. We're about to have, Neptune moving into Aries in 2025. So I feel like we need to do our research and be super, super careful of like scams and things like that right now. The trick is Uranus and Taurus. I've basically said to everyone, financially, Uranus and Taurus does not like get rich quick. So if you think you're gonna make, like find a, you know, a coin that multiplies your dollar into a million dollars, it's not gonna happen, right? Um, and I shouldn't say that it's not gonna happen because it could, but it's not gonna happen if it's just like, uh, you know, um, the next Dogecoin that you think that, that someone tells you Elon is supporting, right? Not gonna happen. So do your research and don't just blindly speculate. I think that's like probably the easiest way to lose all your money <laughs> this year. I would be doing your research on anything. Anything you're gonna be putting money into, I don't care what it is, I would be doing your research. You're buying a car, do your research. I feel uh, like I get the energy of no speculation on that card. That's literally what it's saying to me. With the Queen of Swords, you have this defense card. Yeah, I feel like you're defensive against the past. She literally has her back to this ego card. You can see her back right here to the ego card. So I feel like you are um, like putting up your defenses against something from the past. And again, I feel like that's a good thing for you to do for sure. Um, and again, by the way, I want to stress with the speculation card and all that as well with Uranus and Taurus, again, if we do our research, if we have a solid foundation and if we don't, you know, if we do the right things, then we'll be fine. But it's like if we, when you're doing, when you're thinking like, oh, like when your cousin from down the street tells you, oh, this coin's going to be the next, like, you know, whatever, then no, <laughs> is what I would say. And I, I've been telling people for years as well, no get rich quick schemes, no, no, none of that, right? We're, we need to focus on stability. But with these three cards here, I'm going to answer one question. So if you have a question, uh, feel free to pause the video now. If you don't, that's fine too. I'm just going to put it all together at the end, like a personalist reading. Uh, but uh, pause now because I'm going to read the cards. You have the three of cups, the fool, and the knight of pentacles. I mean, literally just the whole entire reading, some sort of amazing new beginning that's going to lead to a celebration for a lot of you. If you're thinking about starting something new, do it, get moving. If you're asking about moving uh, here with these cards, I would say do it. I, I literally do feel that a move could uh, change things for you. I always tell a story. It's like, you know, years ago, I moved to Seattle. I don't live there any longer, but, um, you know, I moved to Seattle. It's like, I like if I'm being honest, like when, before I moved there, I was like, oh, it's going to feel so much different. But it's like, I never felt like I actually lived there. <laughs> like it's weird. Um, you know, it didn't change anything, right? So it's, it's like sometimes I think we think we're going to move and it's going to change things and it, it doesn't, right? But for you, I feel like if you're moving, this is literally saying that it literally will change your energy. It will change how you feel. I think you're going to notice the change as well. So definitely a yes. Uh, for others, I feel like there's some sort of celebration coming in for you. This is like new love I'm getting here as well. Again, probably next week, we're going to do part two. We're going to look at um, love, the love houses and things like that for 2023. Um, but I do feel there could be new love coming in for you. It could be an earth sign that's coming in for you or someone with a lot of earth in their chart. They feel very stable. I also feel like they're very focused as well. And again, the two heads facing together on that one card, the flattery card, there's something about very similar kind of like deep beliefs, like morals, ethics, the way you were raised. I think those things could be similar. It's kind of weird because I think those things are similar, but it's a different type of person. I don't know. Very interesting. But uh, thank you for being here, Aries. Really appreciate it. Make sure to watch your Sun, Moon, and Rising for a full picture of what's going on for you at this time. But uh, thank you and definitely enjoy your year.